this morning, we shall be applying the oil of gladness. But before then, I will be speaking on the subject, your praise and your atmosphere. This is part two. Your praise and your atmosphere. Second Chronicles chapter 5, verse 13 to 14. came even to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord saying for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever, that then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of the Lord. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. your praise and your atmosphere. We have as an objective first to understand the connection between your praise and the atmosphere around your life. Also to understand the atmosphere or the climate that your praise creates. How many of us have noticed that human beings carry climates or atmospheres? You have been in the atmosphere of people before. And it's exciting, it's excitable, interesting. You have also been in the climate and atmosphere of people before. It's very depressing. Very uncomfortable. I remember a young man who, who used to come to our house almost 20 years ago. Daughter here was a baby. And that man carried a very, very terrible atmosphere. He said, Daddy, I don't, I don't like that uncle. That uncle is alive today, still, about 50 or so, still unmarried, with the same climate, finds fault with everybody, with everything. Our lives carry climate, we carry atmospheres. But what is very important is that the atmosphere of your life affects many things. And there are two things on the effect of the climate we carry. Number one, atmosphere affects attainment. What you can become in life is affected by the atmosphere you carry. We saw that in the life of Joseph in the first service. But what about Jesus Christ? Acts chapter 10 verse 38. He said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Why? God was with him. He carried the climate of God. There was an atmosphere around him that caused him to attain things. It's not possible for somebody to have a depressive and unexciting atmosphere and become anything in life, for example. Secondly, atmosphere affects potentials. It affects potential. What can come out of your life is affected by the kind of climate you carry. Another way to say it is attitude affects aptitude. It affects aptitude. You have heard of aptitude test. A bad attitude can never produce a good aptitude. In Acts chapter 4 and in verse 13, 
those who had been with the master, they showed something. When they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. So atmosphere affects attainment, it affects potential. So you must work on your atmosphere. And one of the tools to use to work on your atmosphere is your praise. Praise is an atmosphere enhancer. Praise is an atmospheric changer. Praise has the capacity to reset, to reset atmosphere. I said in the first service that praise destroys the wrong atmosphere and creates the right one. Your praise will destroy the wrong climate and create the right one. And how many of the, and, 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 what, are, and what are those climates or atmospheres that can be destroyed by praise and what are the ones that can be created? Let's rush straight. Number one, praise destroys the climate of heaviness and depression and replaces it with the climate of joy and celebration. We looked at that in the first service. I, I may not have the time to go into detail with them. Praise destroys the climate of heaviness and depression and replaces it with the climate of joy and celebration. Meaning that when you carry praise, you are not permitted to be depressed. Second, the scripture verses are there. Praise destroys the climate of disfavor and rejection. There are some people, their life is disfavor, is rejection. People reject them even when they don't know who they are. It destroys the climate of disfavor and rejection and replaces it with the climate of favor and acceptance. That is your praise will make your life acceptable. Your, play, your praise will make you a favorable personality. A favored personality. Scriptures are there. Acts 2, 47, 1 Samuel 16, 17 to 21. We saw that in the first service. Now, thirdly, praise destroys the climate of oppression and affliction and replaces it with the climate of deliverance and liberty. The climate of oppression and affliction and replaces it with the climate of deliverance and liberty. There are some people, their lives carry oppression. Just there is a garment of oppression. I've heard of people who get into marital relationship and then the next night a demon will appear to the person they want to marry to warn the person. Stay away from that girl. Stay away from that man. Not only are they oppressed, encountering them brings you into oppression. There are people, there are places you sleep in and something lands on you. Am I communicating? There are places you sleep, you must have nightmare. No matter how much you pray. Climate. But this can be destroyed by the power of praise. Psalm 32 verse 7. It said, Thou art my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall compass me about with songs of deliverance. First Samuel chapter 16 verse 23. And it came to pass as the evil spirit from God was upon Saul that David took a harp, played it with his hand and Saul was refreshed. And the evil spirit departed from him. 
that climate checked out, that the, 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 the release of praise cleaned out the climate of oppression that was around the life of Saul, the king of Israel. Of course, you know, Acts chapter 16, verse 25 and 26, when Paul and Silas prayed, and the oppressive prison atmosphere gave way to liberty and freedom. There was an earthquake and the door opened. Anybody here whose life is surrounded with oppression and affliction, today I declare it is broken. As we step into praise shortly, any climate around you that favors oppression, that favors affliction, that favors sickness or the climate of your house, I declare by the power of praise, it is broken. Number four, praise destroys the climate of shame and reproach and replaces it with a climate of dignity and honor. It destroys the climate of shame and reproach and replaces it with a climate of dignity and honor. There are, see, the devil is a very, very wicked devil. There is, there is, a, there is this climate of shame, climate reproach that people carry. Come across people with inexplainable smell. It's not body odor. It's a demonic sin. I was talking to a, a woman some time ago. Every time she's talking to somebody, she'll close, put her hand on her mouth like this. And she's talking. She'll put her hand on her mouth like this. And after I said, so, so what is happening, madam? He said, oh, that, uh, there is this odor. There is something. I said, remove your hand from your mouth and talk into my nose. Nothing. I called my wife. I said, talk, let her hear. Speak, let, let her hear. Nothing. Clean breath. But she had carried that climate for years. She doesn't interact with people in public. She doesn't do nothing. She's just a shadow of herself. One man, three women left him. He married one, he left. He married the other, he left. He married the third. All of them say they perceive a smell around him that sends them away. The climate of shame. For you, it may not be as extreme as that. But the devil organizes embarrassment for you all the time or makes your life to feel like you are less than other people, moving about like a shadow of yourself, moving about like you are less than others. That climate can be handled by your praise. Why do I say so? In Joel chapter 2 and in verse 26, Joel chapter 2 verse 26, he said, And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. Praise and shame don't exist together. If you have praised, you can't be ashamed. Praise and shame don't exist together. Don't, they can't coexist together. Because praise brings glory and glory swallows shame. Second Chronicles chapter 5 verse 13 and in verse 14, you look at how the glory of God descended as they praised. Whenever you praise God, you connect glory. And where glory is, shame can be present. Because... Glory and shame are as mutually exclusive as light and darkness. Get set. Everything, every clothing of shame that is upon your life today shall be destroyed and dissolved and dismantled. And you shall wear glory. You shall wear honor. You shall wear dignity. Shout the loudest. Amen. Number five. Praise destroys the climate of ugliness or unattractiveness 
and replaces it with the climate of beauty and attractiveness. I will talk about that in the next service. But Psalm 33 verse 1, the Bible said, Praise. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. There is another translation you showed me, that is HCSB. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous ones. Praise from the upright is beautiful. Really, it says, praise is beautiful for the upright. That is the Bible in basic English. Right? We'll look at that in the last service. And then finally, praise destroys the climate of dryness and emptiness and replaces it with a climate of increase and multiplication. There are people, everything dry, dries up around them. Everything dries up. Everything dries. Life is dry. It just, they are just dry. They are just dry. That's the kind of person you, pl you place inside the river, he will dry it up and turn it to a desert. Everything is dry. But, praise will destroy that climate. We'll look at that in the last service. Finally, what is my counsel? Make the choice for joy and praise. Make the choice. Especially since you know that your praise affects the climate of your life. Don't wait for external situations. To trigger your praise. Don't wait for things to happen before you can praise God. Praise him. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17 to 19. He said, Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail and the field shall, be, and the, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold and there is no head in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice. Somebody say yet. Say it louder. Say yet. Say it louder. Say yet. Say it is December. Say it after me. Say it is December. I am trusting God for many things. Yet, I will praise. That is a choice. It's a choice. Yes, go ahead and give me a shout of victory. Make the choice. Make a deliberate, conscious choice. I won't, allow, I won't even allow people to determine my joy. I was telling the other, somebody the other day, I said, when you, when, you make, when you allow people to make you happy or sad, what you have decided to do is to hand over your destiny to human beings. Their action determines your attitude, which is a miserable way to live. That is, you have given the power of your life to people. How you feel is determined by what people do. What a miserable way to live. I mean, you are meant to be jumping and laughing and screaming at the person that wants you to be sad and crying. Somebody say a loud amen. Make the choice. Number two, never get tired of doing the right thing. Never. Galatians 6, 9, we read in the first service, he said, and, be, and let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13 said, Second Thessalonians 3, 13, do you have it? Or there is no such, or there is no such passage. But ye brethren, be not weary. Don't get tired of doing what you know is correct. The devil may make you feel like you are wasting your time, but let God be true and let every devil be a liar. It pays to praise. It pays to evangelize. It pays to worship. It pays to tithe. It pays to give. It pays to change lives. It pays to be committed to God. Irrespective of what the devil wants to make you feel or not. Let God be true. 
and let every devil be a liar. Just keep at it. If you don't see the result immediately, you must see the result eventually. There was a time in our life where it appeared like we were wasting our time serving God. Where there were others who were our age mates rocking life. They were the ones enjoying themselves. We were the ones suffering our lives. Thinking we're serving God. But today, the difference is clearer than east and west. Than it. It's too far. It's too far. It's too far. I don't have any of those people who lived for the devil while we were living for God to envy. I don't have one. Some are not alive. Am I communicating? If the profit of doing the right thing doesn't come immediately, it will come eventually. If it doesn't come instantly, it will come ultimately. Because God is not a man to lie. If he said, if you follow this road, you will end in that place. Once you follow the road, it doesn't matter the obstacles that come along the way. You must reach where God says you are going to reach. Stand up on your feet and give the Lord a shout of praise. When you give up on God, you have agreed with the devil. That the devil is correct and God is wrong. And, and such an agreement is a mortal, deadly, dangerous agreement. That will lead you on to disaster. But that will never be your portion. Today is your day. I came here this morning. The Lord spoke to me before I came. That is wiping out the tear of somebody. The tear of somebody. That tear of lack. The tear of shame. The tear of reproach. That is saying how shall this year end? How will it be like? I, I don't have even what to eat. I don't know how this season is going to be. It's wiping your tears this morning. And he said to let somebody know, the year has not ended yet. Don't conclude on the year yet. Your best expectation is about to be manifested. Your best expectation is about to be manifested. Don't conclude on the year yet. The year has not ended yet. The year has not ended yet. The year has not ended yet. Look at the neighbor, say this year has not ended yet. Don't conclude in a hurry. We have 22 to 23 more days. And if God created the whole world in six days, anything can happen in t under 10 days. Hey! Hey! I said if God can create the whole world under six days, it, can, it does not need 23 days to change your life. It does not need 22 days to change your life, to change your story, and to give you the testimony that you expect. Will you celebrate God for the next seven minutes? Will you do it for seven minutes? Will you celebrate God for seven minutes? Will you celebrate God and let God know you, are, you, you believe Him? All right, let me say, will you change your climate within seven minutes? Will you change to the climate of favor, the climate of acceptance, the climate of celebration, the climate of joy, the climate of liberty, the climate of freedom, the climate of deliverance, the climate of healing? Are you ready? Help me shake the hands of seven will tell them change your climate, change your climate, change the climate to the praise. Let's go.
We worship you. We honor you. Lift your hands everywhere you are and receive this declaration. Just go ahead and first of all praise God for what for, for this moment. Thank you for the change of climate, the change of atmosphere, the change of climate and the change of atmosphere around you. Lift your voice and thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. In Jesus' precious name, lift your hands high. I prophesy to everyone here today. Before then. Every climate of heaviness, every climate of depression on your life, on your life, today I declare that climate is dissolved now and be replaced with the climate of joy and celebration. Every climate of disfavor, every climate of rejection around your life today is dissolved and I release upon you that climate of favor and acceptance where they disfavored you before and rejected you. You shall have favor and acceptance in this season. In the name of Jesus, every climate of oppression climate of affliction upon your life in this season I declare now it dissolves by the speakings of the blood of Jesus and by the power of praise I declare that this climate be replaced with the climate of deliverance and liberty in the name of Jesus every climate of shame reproach today is dissolved it gives way for the climate of honor and dignity in the name of Jesus. Every climate of ugliness and unattractiveness, I declare it is replaced with the climate of beauty and attractiveness in the name of Jesus. Every climate of dryness and emptiness be replaced now with increase with multiplication and now I announce according to the prophetic word I received the tears of shame lack reproach in this season is wiped out God shall take you by surprise you say I don't know what to eat I don't know how this season is going to be he will take you by surprise in the name of Jesus he said that the year has not ended yet because you have seen nothing yet. Your highest expectation should be raised at this time because you are in your best and your finest season. I announce that the best miracle of your life will happen within the next 22 to 23 days. In the name of Jesus. He says that he is unveiling and uncovering and announcing somebody's life. So whatever they have used to cover you, what veil they have used to cover you, what veil they have used to cover you, today it is set on fire and you shall be announced before the end of the year to the shock of your adversaries, to the surprise of your enemies, you shall be announced. And every package of sorrow loaded in this season for you is repackaged and returned back to hell return back to hell return back to hell every monetary spirit spirit of diversion of favor that has been following you in this season it is broken listen what is coming to you in this season before the end of the year no devil, no witch, no occult power can block it. It will reach your hands in the name of Jesus. The power of the spirit of death is broken. There shall be no loss in the name of Jesus. That job, that breakthrough you have been trusting God for, stretch your two hands in front of you. 
in this next 22 to 23 days it is delivered into your hands it is released into your hands in the name of Jesus then he said you shall praise and you shall dance your way across into 2020 you shall praise and dance into 2020 the miracles and the expectations that will make you to dance in this season shall be manifested shall and they are released to you already in the name of jesus is there somebody who will dance can you just dance a musicless dance a drumless dance if you are going to dance across into the next year hallelujah 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 give the lord a 60 second shout of victory 60 seconds Mahashiba, yeah, 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 hey! In Jesus' precious name, lift your hands high. The only person that may not be a beneficiary of this prophetic word is that person whose life is not in order with God, whose relationship with God is not in order. You want to make your ways right with God. You want Jesus to be Lord over your life. You want today to mark a new day, a turning point for you. You want Jesus to be Lord over your life. You want today to mark a new day and a turning point for you. Carry your Bibles and your bags and quickly rush forward here. You want to be genuinely born again. You want Jesus to save you. You want Jesus to deliver you. Quickly carry your Bibles, carry your bags, and rush to the frontier. Quickly, 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 quickly. I'll give you the count of seven. One. Two. God bless you. Go with your Bibles. I want to be born again. I want to be free. I want to live for God. I want to love Jesus. Quickly. Three. Four. Five and six. God bless you. God bless you. I see the crowd of people coming from everywhere. You want to rededicate yourself to God? You can join us. Just a moment there. You want an addiction broken? You smoke, you drink, womanizing, whatever form of addiction, whatever has chained your life, and you want that chain broken? Also step forward here and let us receive you. Quickly, 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 quickly. I start again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Go ahead, give the Lord a bigger clap. And seven. Again, one, and two, and three, and four, five, six, seven. Stand up, stand up. You can stand up on your feet. God bless you. Place your right hand on your chest. Those coming still come. Stretch your hands towards them, people. Those coming still come. Place your right hand on your chest. And say after me, Lord Jesus, I come before you today. I surrender my life to you. Forgive me my sins. Today, I have decided to follow you, Jesus. No turning back. Forward ever. Backward never. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray for you today. I declare the hold of the enemy broken off your life. I declare and decree grace to live for God be released upon you. Help from above is your portion. I call it done in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Counselors, you go with them, right? And then have your seat nearby here so they can still be part of the service. Give the Lord a celebration as you proceed. Our officers will talk with you.